I'm David Trace with the Autopian. I'm here with suspension engineer and Autopian contributor Hubert Mays and from Classic Team Lotus, Chris, thank you for joining us. Okay, pleasure. Behind us we have some special Lotus Formula One cars. What are we looking at, Hubert? So we're looking at a 1977 Formula One car. This car is the first car that had ground effects. Behind it is a 1982 Formula One car. And that is the first car to have a full carbon fiber tub and also the last car to have ground effects. So we have a five year difference between these cars. What we'd like to do is look at the two of them and see how the evolution of technology moved in those five years. Chris, can you explain a little bit how the ground effects on these cars works? Sure, well, as you rightly pointed out, this is the first ground effect car. And if you were to take this side panel off here, you'd find, you'd find a profile that kind of runs from here where the radiator exit is, along here, and then it ramps right up to there. So you really, it's like an aeroplane wing, but upside down. So the idea then is air comes in underneath here. Exactly. Flows under the car. Yeah. And as, as you were pointing out, this profile was coming up. Yeah. As that happens, the ground is staying where it is. Yeah. And what it's doing is it is it's expanding it forces the air to expand and as air expands of course the pressure drops yep, exactly and it that. sucks the car down yep. so in 77 this was novel that's what that's was unique this was all new but if you notice that the back of this car is quite clustered at the exit right and over the five year period of the evolution of ground effects that area was cleaned up right because you, you have that nice airflow coming out here yeah, that it hits and it all gets this all messy. stuff and gets exactly. all muddy yeah sure and kind of ruins the effect in the back. And when it was in its infancy, we still needed quite big wings, the front and rear, to give us more downforce. Because you weren't getting that much out of the we weren't getting as much yet as we would in later right. years, exactly. Right. And this car was quite softly sprung mm -hmm. because, again, that was that was the tradition. You have a lot of mechanical grip from soft suspension, right. and you have aero grip from high speed, uh, stiffer suspension. So as they were learning, the cars got stiffer. They got cleaner, they got closer to the ground, and uh, the wings well, became a lot smaller. But con controlling the height of that venturi relative to the ground is very important. Right? So if you have a soft suspension and it starts to move a lot yep. because of the, the, you the, do, the You do get a lot of pit sensitivity, at, exactly. At higher yeah. speeds, then sure. th that starts to become a problem, doesn't it? It does. In these days, a lot of it was suspension and aero, and right. we didn't know that the aero really was the fundamental. That's the mm -hmm. key thing that makes the cars go yeah. quicker. Um, I noticed too here, you've got brushes here along this. I assume that's to that's allow all for to have, that's all to seal flow, airflow to go into here and cool yeah, your brakes. And to seal the underside. And you can see here how the suspension is actually attached to the, the gearbox. Yeah, in the fact, gearbox. and the brake calipers. The suspension goes through the brake calipers. Yeah, yeah that's wild. Which is, I, I mean, that's the first time I actually ever saw that. Another thing I noticed about this front suspension is that Unlike the rear suspension, which is a very traditional design with just links and yeah. basically kind of from an airflow standpoint, sure. a bit of a mess, in the front, there was an attempt to make these parts a bit aerodynamic. Yeah, so, so allow the, the airflow air, flow allow through the there. air to go up inside to the radiator to cool the engine uh -huh. and to go underneath into the venturi under there. Right. I think we're ready to talk about the other one. Yeah, let's do it. So now we've got the 1982 car, the end of the ground effect era. We've taken the engine cover off so you can see inside. The only thing underneath there is a drive shaft and an AR. The rest of it's all up here. The springs are real close in the middle. So the rear rockers and everything, they don't interfere with the airflow underneath the car. And the, the, whereas on the old car, the ground effects ended. It yeah, ended the tower. Here, sure. they extend all the way, all the way to, the, to back. the back of the yeah. car. So wow. the, the effect is, is much stronger. Yeah. The way that we've designed it is we're telling the air where we wanted to go rather than the old car. Right. It was going wherever it wanted once it got past the, right. the diffuser. Now, here, the, the suspension looks very different on this car. This, the, the lower wing. arm yeah. is much more like a wing. Yes, it has indeed. much more of a wing section. To, 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 to keep the airflow clean. Yeah. The upper arm is quite large, but I guess it's high enough. Yeah, and it's, it's not really in the, the way. upper arm is the loaded uh, is the load bearing arm. So there's a um, there's a coil spring and damper just inside. So that's the one that does all the work. This monocoque, instead of being a straight sided thing like this one, this one is actually angled in uh -huh. um, because it allowed us to make bigger tunnels. And the right. leading edge of the, of the of the under tray on this car is also adjustable, so you can move the center of gravity forwards or backwards just by trimming the leading edge oh, really? uh, of, the, wow. of the floor up and down. How, by how is it adjusted? <laughs> uh, 
it's uh, it's on a on a bolt with some spacers, so you just literally take the bolt out, change the spacer height, and you can see we've got it raised a little bit. So the brakes are outboard. The gearbox is much much thinner; it's around four inches narrower. The gearbox, and it doesn't have the calipers on it. So the whole back end, we've allowed to. You speed the air up real quick under the where it's close to the ground, and then you're allowing it to suck itself out the back. And, the the and the result is that this wing is a lot smaller, a lot smaller. than the wing on the old car. Because exactly. you're getting so much more effect out of the underside of the car, you didn't need as much wing to keep the car down. So that this is the last car. Why is this the last car that has ground effects? The problem that we had in this era, because between the two there were sliding skirts, which some of the viewers may have heard of, mm -hmm. and they were on springs which actually pushed them into the ground. And they banned them because they, if they ever broke, then you had a huge loss of air and you lost the downforce and the cars became really dangerous and flying off the track. Right. So the, uh, the FIA in November of 19... 82 decided they were going to change the rules so anything between the leading edge of the rear wheel and the trailing edge of the front wheel if you were underneath the car looking up that had to be flat and unbroken okay this is a awesome look at a really cool era of racing chris thank you very much for, for showing us yeah thank you pleasure it was a pleasure indeed yeah.